Hi guys. So I've seen several people making like this kind of person X reacts to movies and shit. Uh, I saw Larry Wickers the other day doing it. I thought it would be fun to do the same thing with Swedish action movies. Uh, but I don't give a shit about the movies because they're mainly shit. This one isn't though, but anyway. Uh, from a Swedish gun nerd perspective anyway, and a collector. So the movie I'm watching or have watched recently again, I've seen this several times, is called Man on the Roof or in Swedish Mannen på taket. It's widely regarded as the first Swedish action movie made in 1976 based on a novel. So yeah, it's actually quite good. I love the cinema cinematograph. I watched that word, whatever. The way it's uh, the, the, all the scenes and all it's and it builds up to to the end and all that. So it was a success, won a bunch of awards and shit. Yeah. So anyway, let's let's uh, discuss uh, the firearms and stuff used in that and the history behind it because this is actually very historically correct from that time. They didn't make shit up when it came to firearms, and some of the choices of firearms are really really interesting as well and some of the twists so let's start <coughs> so this is the first time <coughs> we see a firearm in the in the movie and the guy that the red arrow is pointing to is uh, is a police officer and he has this big cupboard and beneath where he has his hands he's b hidden his service pistol and that's his wife on the left yeah 1976 sweden right so here you can see him pulling it out it's a Walter PP. So the Swedish police used the Walter PP until sometime in the early 1980s. I don't know exactly the date. Then the Swedish police switched to the Sig Sauer P225 and they had some adventures with that, mainly regarding magazine capacity because it was politically incorrect to have a large magazine capacity. So they had like 10 rounds or something. Nowadays they have a proper magazine capacity. But uh, that went back and forward during the 80s and 90s until they got something comparable to what they should have <laughs> straight away. Actually, the Swedish police is, co is considering swapping out the service handgun. So who knows what that'll be. Hopefully a Glock or something useful. We'll see. Sweden has always been a bit stupid with procurement of firearms. So here we can see that it really is a Walter PP. Uh, yeah, my picture isn't in the way. <coughs> and uh, he he's uh, leaving his apartment and he has this uh, shoulder holster I uh, didn't get a good picture of it but he carries in a shoulder holster here you can see him putting it on not sure if that is like standard police equipment and I like how, how he sweeps the camera with the gun he never put the finger on the trigger though so that that's credit to him for that I guess <laughs> so the so the bad guy in this uh, movie has this firearm. You can't really see in this picture, but it's uh, it is a M1941 Johnson, and that's a 30 odd six rifle. It's uh, like mainly a light machine gun with a 20 round single stack magazine pointing out the side, and it's a very interesting firearm. Here you can see the single stack. Uh, 46 magazine pointing out the side it's interesting it was used in the second world war and and this is the only firearm in the movie they actually focus on and actually gives a brief description of like rounds per minute and stuff when they try to point out how dangerous this guy is <clears throat> but it's uh, it was meant to compete with the uh, bar in the second world war it didn't actually do that much some special forces used it some police forces and stuff like that it was in some theaters in the second world war but not really that common but it has some really cool shit going on for it so here's a picture from wikipedia of that firearm so it recoils the barrel backwards and as you can see it has a straight line uh, the, the recoil of it it has a flip up rear, rear sight you can remove the barrel as well for paratrooper use and it has a straight recoil backwards <coughs> so it's 
quite ahead of its time. And if you know what rifle this compares to, it compares to the German paratrooper or Fallschirmsjäger gun FG FG42, since it has the rifle, uh, the, the magazine on the side and all that. It, this is like an American FG42, and in, there, it's more similarities as well because. <clears throat> When you put it in open, it fires full auto from an open bolt and semi-auto from a closed bolt for accuracy. And that's the exact same function as the FG42 as well. So they don't really have anything in common except small aesthetics and uh, usage scenarios, paratroopers and stuff and, and that thing. But uh, it's like a, a magical parallel development roughly the same time great minds think alike I guess and this is another interesting thing with the Johnson as you can see on this picture of the bolt it kind of looks like an AR-15 bolt so it has all the, the, the lugs all over the bolt so when, it, when you have a lot of lugs on the bolt it doesn't have to travel that far to close so if you have like two lugs on a regular mouser action or something you have to travel like 90 degrees or if you have free bolts, it's less, uh, so you don't have to I think uh, the new Q rifle, the fix or something has uh, a bunch of uh, lugs on the bolt. So you don't have to You just do this to open the bolt and cycle it. And it's the same principle here. You don't have to uh, twist it that much to lock it. So this design showed up a bit later. So th this was uh, made in 1941. So in, in the 60s, a person named Eugene Stoner stole this ID <laughs> and made an AR-15. And the rest is history, as you say. So th that's a fun fact. Here we can see Swedish uh, SWAT team of the 1970s. They had the, this, this is actually the way they looked. So this is qu quite interesting. Uh, these blue coveralls, some kind of ballistic armor that doesn't really stop a 30 old six. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, the police variant of the Swedish K and that silly helmet with the small slit. I think I have a better picture of it. Here you can see it better. Uh, it's hardly visible in the video, but the police uh, M45Bs uh, or their variant of it, I don't remember what the designation was, uh, they're actually black. And the military ones was uh, like an OD green, gray kind of thing. And these M45Bs, or the Swedish case actually had a fire selector, so you could put it on semi-auto. That was not possible with the military version or the one I have. They're only full auto, but this had a fire selector. Not sure what happened to all these uh, submachine guns, but they're hideously rare. And I've never seen any, any one of those. I believe they all scrapped them. Uh, but this was the SWAT police in the 1970s in Sweden. With I've seen the helmets in the police museum. Uh, so yeah, here's a close-up. Here you can see that it's black, very tactical with a uh, black Swedish K. <laughs> and here you can see the silly front sight of the Johnson. Just wanted to show it. And this is another picture where uh, you can't see it in this picture, but this is the Swedish K. But they have a uh, they put up some, put some equipment on it to fire uh, tear, tear gas grenades. So they shot a blank, a, a specific blank bullet. Uh, I have, I actually in my collection have a box of these blank bullets with, where it says property of the Swedish police and it's just blanks. But you use the blank to get the gas pressure out of the barrel. I'm guessing they put it on semi or they just had one round in the magazine. And then they had this grenade sight on it they put on. So I think I got a better picture of this. Yeah, here you can see it a bit better where they put on this grenade stuff on the Swedish K. So the police were the only ones to ever use this. The military never had uh, like a rifle grenade system for the Swedish K. Not that I know of any, anyway. <clears throat> but the Swedish police had it for tear gas grenades anyway. Uh, would be fun to have uh, that uh, system to put on the Swedish K just to have a look at it or for the collection, but uh, never seen any of those either. Probably scrapped with the Swedish K's the police had. Very sad. But that's cool. 
not many people know that there actually was a rifle grenade system for the Swedish K. <laughs> and here, here, here they are firing it. So this is the business end of the rifle grenade system. And you can see the, uh, the aiming system they put on it. It seems to be like... It almost looks like it's canted. This is the only pictures I ever seen of it as well. Perhaps I should go back to the police museum and see if there's anything. Maybe they have. I need to go there and have a look at this. Uh, well, anyway. So uh, now we're nearing the end of the movie. Uh, since I'm only interested in the firearms, you know, it's a small part of the movie. So this is where they're going to storm the shooter and uh, they need like an extra man for some reason this is like a kind of a plot hole but for some reason uh, the movie says that we need another man and he says can i use my own gun it don't take a minute to get it <laughs> because first uh, i don't have a picture of that but first please say give the man a gun and he said well, well can't i use my own gun <laughs> so that that's interesting because that's uh, that says something about uh, gun ownership in uh, in Sweden at the time. And the next picture will say a lot more. Uh, uh, did you get a license for that gun? <laughs> and it, and it says the, that he hasn't. Uh, and this is literally the last line in the movie. Then expect trouble because he didn't have a license for the gun. So this is like kind of a hint, you should get a license for your guns. So apparently there was a shitload of unlicensed firearms that civilians owned back then. I don't have any other information on that except that it's enough to put in the movie. Yeah, but it is a good movie and it is like a, a time capsule document of Sweden and guns of the time. So yeah, I can recommend uh, The Man on the Roof or Mannen på taket classic Swedish action movie probably the first real Swedish action movie and it did it really well okay I hope you enjoyed that have a nice day